Hey everyone, welcome back to Solving the Mystery of Frumville. I will be discussing From Season 2, Episode 10, Once Upon a Time. I will be giving you my breakdown and theories of this video. Also stay tuned for the end of the video, I will be giving you my score for Season 2 overall. So this is it, this is the season finale. I'm so excited to share my thoughts with you guys. So let's get started. This episode starts off with Boyd. He is at Kenny's mom's house. He knows that Julie was one of the three people that are in a deep sleep and cannot wake up. While Kenny and Christy goes upstairs to check on Julie, Boyd goes outside and sees Jade. Jade stated that it's too much that we don't know, like opening a book and start from the middle or trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle with a few random pieces. He also mentioned how you only need two things to be connected to get everything started and that's when Boyd had the idea to speak with Sarah because remember Boyd stated to Kenny that she is the key to getting out of the town or figuring out what is going on. So Boyd, Sarah, Kenny goes into the woods and Boyd explains to Sarah that Elgin sees the boy in white in his dream. He says the nursery rhyme. Sarah hasn't heard the nursery rhyme before. Boyd stated that the kid running the magical forest doing good and Sarah stated that I don't think he's really a little boy. This was one of the most important parts of this episode. My theory is that the boy in white probably is a Greek god. It seems like this show is based on a lot of mythology. So the question is, is who is the boy in white? We know in season one that Ethan sees him for the very first time. Victor stated that he has been gone for a long time. Now they need to ask him why he's back. Victor stated that the boy choose Ethan like he once did with Victor. But the boy in white communicates more with Victor than anyone else. Boy shows Sarah and Kenny where he was the whole time in the forest. He explains the man Martin and before he says anything further, Sarah says she can hear the music box and hear the voices of the three victims and start saying the nursery rhyme. Sarah stated that it was laughing at Boy for setting free. Now, you can see Kenny looking puzzled because at first, Kenny was getting a little bit agitated and you can tell that he probably didn't believe Sarah when she said she heard the voices and she heard the music box. And I was thinking like, you really gonna, gonna say something about that? And I was like, I really hope not. But his face expression shows it all. And it's like after what everyone been through, it seems like Kenny is kind of still in disbelief a little bit. In order for the victim to stop suffering, you have to destroy the music box. Jade is trying to find out the symbols that he keeps seeing. He starts talking to the old bartender and he advises him to go to the cave to get answers. When he arrives at the cave, he goes inside and sees the children lying down in a circle, looking up and saying a cooey. That's when Jade finally sees the symbol. It looks like three branches and the symbol of the letter A. The name Akui is a boy name meaning evil. What if the kids was chanting this man's name? Boyd finally realized how to get to the music box. He uses the torch from episode one when he met Martin. Once he lights the torch, he sees Julie, Randall, and Christy's girlfriend tied up like Martin, and he also sees the music box. But before he goes to see it, he sees his wife, Abby. Abby stated, destroying the box is not going to end their suffering. It will only prolong it. She said people in the town will suffer in ways that you can't imagine. Whatever it is, it sends Abby to chat with Boyd to warn him because it knows that Boyd won't listen. It wants him to fight and have hope and that he can actually win. It's not fear that feeds the forest, it's hope. And as you can see, the characters like Boyd, Jade, Tabitha, and even Jim all have hope and maybe if they can solve the clues they can leave the town and as you can tell there are consequences of trying to understand or figure out what's going on. Tabitha talks to Victor and asks him if he knew where the lighthouse is. He stated no but he knows where the bottle tree is. So Victor finds the bottle tree and tells Tabitha that this is where he found his mom and she didn't make it to the tree. He also mentioned that his mom said that the bottle tree is a special tree and that it would lead to the lighthouse. 
The lighthouse has been the most important key since season one, especially when Sarah and Boyd found the lighthouse, but they didn't use the faraway tree to lead them there. The history of the lighthouse has often been associated with ghost stories and supernatural phenomena. Tales of apparition, haunted lighthouses have been passed down through generations. Some believe that the souls of the deceased lighthouse keepers still linger within the walls of the structures, carrying out the duties even in the afterlife. These stories add on air of mystery and intrigue of lighthouses, affecting those seeking phenomenal experience. I love the bond between Victor and Tabitha. I think it was my most favorite throughout this episode. It reminds Victor of his mom. Once Tabitha went inside a tree, it led her to the lighthouse. And you see the vision she had in season one come to life. And then another boy in white apologized to what he is about to do, which is push her out the lighthouse window. She woke up at the hospital, which is St. Andrews, which means that she had escaped from the town. And the question is how she's going to go back and find them. Because the whole time, they were in another dimension. So that town is going to get shifted and moved. Just like when Victor told Tabitha about the Bala tree and had it moved to a different area. And not to mention the trees was moving in another direction as well. Because in season one, Victor has been measuring the distance from the faraway tree and he kept telling Ethan that it was getting closer and closer and the climate has been changing because now it's getting a little bit colder. So in mythology, lighthouses have acquired symbolic meaning over time. The steady beam of light cutting through the darkness represent hope, guidance, and safe passage. So I guess that's what Abby had meant when she had spoke with Boyd about how the fear feeds into hope. But the lighthouse is a huge symbol throughout both seasons because it's all about representing hope and God and also a safe passage to get out. And that's what Tabitha was trying to do. She was trying to free the children and maybe to help her daughter Julie, but it freed herself for her to leave from the town. I enjoyed episode 10. It gave us answers and more clues that will lead to the next season. Hopefully season three be renewed. I have a feeling that it is. Overall, I thought season two was really good. I love the character development and storyline. I would give this season a 10 out of a 10. Let me know what you think about the season finale. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like and subscribe and until then, see you later.